Are you blessed and highly favored? Prove it. <laughs> you know how you prove it? You worship. That's how you get blessed and highly favored. You get in God's presence and you get slammed. Amen. Praise God. Because when you're filled, you don't care. Hey Amen. You just don't care. That's all you want to do is whatever Jesus wants you to do. <laughs> oh, this is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have the choice. Yes. The power to choose. The power to choose. It's unfortunate that too many people are not discerning what voice they hear. You know, the greatest joy of a parent is that the children see, in other words, as a father, we've shared this before, the greatest joy of our eternal father is that we see what he sees. Amen? Amen. The second greatest joy is that you hear what he says. To know his voice is vital. Vital. That's why we're called Christians. Because we're to know his voice, Christ-like. He speaks in multiple ways. He can speak to you in front of a bumper. and Right in front of your car, right on a bumper. He can speak to you in multiple ways, especially when you're looking for a truck and come right in front of you and say something, you know. But he can speak to you in all kinds of ways and, and especially in all kinds of circumstances. He can speak to you in dreams and visions. He can do all kinds of things. He's constantly wanting to commune with you. Always. Every decision, there must be some communication. That's why he says, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I'll establish your steps. Amen. I'll establish your thoughts. Lean not on your own understanding. But there are things that interfere. One of the things that interfere with a person hearing God's voice is sin. That interferes. You may hear, repent, if you're listening. Sin always interferes and blocks. Pride's a number one. Number two one. Uh, so you got sin, which is pride. But pride will block the voice of God. And, and in this area, how about unforgiveness? That will definitely block the voice of God. In Matthew chapter 6, if you'll go there with me, please. So the Lord talks about being filled and being dressed with the full armor of God. And one of the things he says is, in being filled with the uh, Spirit and, and being dressed with the full armor of God, he, said, he talks about the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart from the enemy. So we got to understand that faith, as we increase more in faith and mature more in faith, that shield is going to protect you from being misled by the voice of the stranger. Why? Because faith in its reality is the connection to the presence of God. And when you're truly connected to the presence of God, you hear. Amen? You hear. So again, we go back to being connected with the presence of God and being aligned with his word, which you're connected to his word. God will speak through the word. He can speak to me and you in multiple, multiple ways. But every day, every day he speaks to me and you. Even the word says that daily he loads us up with benefits. So many times people have no idea. That's why every morning you and I must constantly make contact with the Lord so that he can reset things. He resets. One of the things he does, he resets your priorities. Because so many things are out of order. I'm telling them, many things in the body of Christ are out of order. There are people behind pulpits that shouldn't be. And there are people who are supposed to be behind pulpits and they're doing something else. There's so much disorder. 
And the reason for this, all of this disorder is because of the lack of knowing God's voice. So people are led by desire. They're led by emotion. Of course, many people these days are led by money. Materialism. There is such a battle between secularism and godliness. It is a huge battle. In Matthew chapter 6, in verse 25. Is everybody there? Jesus is speaking and he says, Therefore I say to you, do not what? Worry. Worry is associated with fear. So he's saying, do not fear. Why? Because fear will nullify faith. It disconnects you from the presence of God. Therefore, I say to you, do not fear or worry about your what? Life. So don't fear for your life. What you will eat or what you will drink or about your body or what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your Father, your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than that woodpecker out on your front lawn? <laughs> Hello? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Oh, he can add a lot. That's a total different continent. Does everybody understand that? In other words, it can't add anything good. It just adds something bad. Do you ever notice that when you get in a circumstance where there's fear, and usually fear comes in an area where you have to make a decision right now. You don't know what to make. And many times people make the wrong decision. And that's when, if your connection with the Lord is there, the Holy Spirit takes over and makes that decision for you. Does everybody get it? One of the things the Holy Spirit loves to do is drive out fear. Because he's with us, not against us. And if God be for you, who can be against you? But you got to get connected first. Because if you're not connected, you're on your own. People worry about so many things. They worry about how they're going to do this, when they're going to do that. So he says, so why do you worry, in verse 28, about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow was thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you little what? Faith. Faith. See, the word says something that all things will work to the good to those who love the Lord. Amen. Now, if you love him, you obey him and call according to his purpose. And that purpose cannot be filled if you're not connected. So it's important that we maintain a connection to God's presence. This is not a religious thing. It's not religion at all. It's a relationship. Amen? Therefore, verse 31, do not worry or be afraid, saying, what will we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Now, a Gentile is someone that it's not connected to the presence of God. Amen? In fact, they are associated with secularism. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. How many of y'all know God knows? It's amazing how many times we fall into place and forget that he does know. Amen? But he says something here. So because he knows all of these things, you should not worry. There's something you must do. Seek first the kingdom. The priority, the order of God's kingdom. The kingdom of God. Get connected to him. 
The kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's God's presence. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and then when you connect, then seek his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. See, many people think that seeking the kingdom of God, everything should be done. No. You must connect and then seek what is pleasing to him. See, that's the difference between religion and relationship. Because people can say, well, I sought the kingdom of God. I read my Bible today. I did all kinds of stuff, but they never got connected with the presence of God and never heard him. There's a difference. Amen? He says, do not fear for your life. <laughs> Why? Because fear will produce connect, disconnection. Amen? It, it, it nullifies faith. Gentiles are those that a secular system which is without God. The secular world is associated with being without God. So he says, seek the kingdom of God and his way of righteousness and he will make a way where there seems to be no way. He always makes a way where there seems to be no way. He will meet your needs. He will bring you life and he'll bring you life abundantly, spiritually and physically. But there's something you and I must constantly do. Always connect to his presence and find out what is his will? What is his righteousness? What pleases him? For that moment, for that day. It's not a one-time event. It's a lifetime event. It is every single day and every decision and everything that you and I do. Why? Because there isn't a person that doesn't want life and life abundantly. But the one thing is, is the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So many people are trying to get what God wants to get to them. They're trying to get in position, but the devil keeps stealing before they can get it. And then they stay in a cycle. And in that cycle, it's always coming around. They get to a place, things seem to be going good, and all of a sudden, boom. Because the devil loves to put limitations on us. Never advancing. Where there seems to be two steps forward, then there's four steps back. That's the void. That's the enemy. That means the Bible says make no place to the devil. That means there's place to the devil somewhere along the line. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 2, verse 11. I'm going to give you the title here in a second. Well, maybe in a few seconds. Ephesians 2, verse 11. Oh, yes. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore, remember that you once were what? Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised, by which is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at the time you were with what? Out. Christ. So anyone that's without Christ is considered a Gentile or associated with secularism. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity." And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit, known as the Holy Spirit, to the Father in the name of Jesus. 
Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone on whom the whole building being fitted together grows to a holy temple in the Lord and whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. That is phenomenal. If it can be fully comprehended, you can actually see your, play, your place. The word says that you and I are blessed, every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Looking through carnal eyes, you can't see that. That's how we are connected. But when we don't see that and comprehend it, there is a disconnection of who we truly are. And there's a drift of identity of who we are. Again, the Gentiles were without the true God. They were without hope. They had no covenant promises. But now that you and I are reconciled by the death of Jesus and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, we now have access to the Father by the Holy Spirit. A life without Christ or a life with Christ? Only a life with Christ can you have access a life without Christ, there is no access. It's access to the throne of grace. It's access to what? The throne of grace. Now, the throne of grace is a representation where God is always releasing his plan because grace is associated with God's plan. And there's two parts of the God's plan. It's a plan of escape, amen, from deception and the enemy and the wrath of God, you know. How about escape from hell? So it's God's plan to escape the deception and wrath of God and the deception of the enemy. But it's also God's plan to prosper and become more abundant in everything that you and I do. In Hebrews chapter 4. So only, only those that are his... To the throne of grace. Oh, glory. Hebrews chapter 4 and 14. Let's speak it. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who is Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of what? Grace. That we may obtain mercy and found grace to help in time of need. Again, our high priest is Jesus Christ. He made the way through the throne of grace for me and you. Hmm. In other words, that is only available to only those who know him and call on his name. Those who have been washed by the blood. He releases his plan of salvation and purpose for each one. Each one. Always making a way of escape from the entrapments of secularism, temptation, and destruction, which is all influenced by evil. I'm going to say that again. He's always making a way of escape for me and you. But if you don't hear, if you're not connected, are you going to step in the trap? Yes. Yeah. Remember, the world is always pressing us in every area. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, the world is tr pressing us. They're always trying to reconnect us back to emotional attachments. They're always trying to reconnect us back to the past, to our failures, our successes. They're always trying to promote self. And God says, deny self so that we can promote Christ. It is a constant thing. It doesn't stop. In 2 Peter chapter 1,
in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Is everybody okay? In verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? In the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. As his what? Divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him. How do you get it? knowledge? Well, you can read the word, but there's another knowledge. It's person to person. It's getting to know him. You can read about someone and never meet him. And when you meet him, you know much more about that person than what you read about him. And it's different. He says, so here, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. That's called secularism there. So you and I are always escaping the pressures of the world, which is secularism. It's a place which is living without the true God. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control or control over self, to self-control, perseverance, which is endurance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. If they are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. If you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said multiply in the knowledge, which means increase your relationship. Increase your relationship with God the Father by knowing Jesus the Christ. And how do you increase your relationship by knowing Jesus Christ. You increase your relationship by knowing him. By increasing your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Who reveals the Son and the Father. And so many people lack that. They lack that. Why? Because in this hope of partaking of his divine nature. You cannot partake of a divine nature without connecting with it. And this divine nature is what overcomes secularism. It is a world of corruption. And we want to escape the entrapments of the sin of lust. To those who are seekers of the throne of God, because there's two types of seekers. There's those who seek the throne and those who seek the phone. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about the phone. Because there's the teachings, phones and thrones. Hello. Why? Because the phone is the voice of secularism. You must be careful. You can get on that phone and connect to the internet and it can bring you to everything. You know why? I'm, look at how many times you've ever. Oh, gosh, I got something there. Oh, let me look it up. Gosh, there's 55 different things I could have. There's so much technology and knowledge on the phone that it can drive you crazy. There's so much information that it's overwhelming. And let me tell you something. Most of it is garbage. Amen. The Bible tells us that in the latter days there will be false prophets, false teachers, doctrines of demons. 
Seductive, seducing spirits that many will be drawn away from the faith because they'll be more interested in what the internet says than what God says. And people become internet seekers instead of voice seekers. And you know why? Because they can't hear God's voice so they look for somewhere else. And it brings disaster, deception. There's so much garbage out there. The world is square, the world is flat, the world is round. You need to go to God and find out exactly what it is. And I'm telling you, he's told me it's round. So I don't give a hoot what anybody says. I'm telling you, there's so much poop out there, it's ridiculous. It's incredible. Pretty soon they're going to say there isn't a world. It's, we're living in an imagination. You really don't exist. I think I heard that by one of these morons on TV. Or whatever it was. Well, who's that guy? Curry? Curry? Didn't he say something like that? He's gone flipped. Well, he's so deep in the demonic uh, in, in arena. Now he says nobody exists. Somebody needs to slap him and see if he exists. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many run to the phone, the secular council, instead of the throne, because they can't hear the voice of God. Oh, snap it. And you know what? They're not willing to wait for God. So they tweet their life off. <laughs> they flesh book all day long. Oh, their opinions are out there, man. And they're selfed. Bunch of selfies. Many run to the phone and the secular council instead of the throne because they can't hear God. Or they're not willing to wait for him. So they run to unauthorized counselors not backed by the Holy Spirit. Again, the body of Christ has been invaded by a silent enemy of self-imposed religion. Self-imposed religion. They take a little bit of truth and then they add their own stuff. Isn't that what the devil does? I'm telling you, the body of Christ has been invaded by a sound of enemies called self-imposed religion. With self-promoted positions of office, many are out of divine order, not following the word of release, rejecting biblical protocol. The ripple effect causes harm, causes departure from individuals, causes departure from God's order of creation, all influenced by deception. Again, we, there are those who are supposed to be behind pulpits and are not. There are people that are supposed to be out in the business world that are in other places, in market ministry. It's incredible. There are those who believe that they've been called to be watchers. And they need, they need to be watched themselves. Because of lack of matur maturity. Many people have gone out in this self-imposed religion. Believing they've been sent by God but never sent at all. God has a protocol to everything. Everything is in the divine order. But they're going to the phone, the internet, and everything else instead of the throne of God to hear what he's saying. And they truly don't get true conviction. And Colossians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Now, I'm not telling you to throw your phone away. Hello? Hello? Or bust it or bleach it, you know. I'm 
And I'm telling you, just be wise. Discern. Because it's taking many people out. Colossians chapter 2. So when something comes to you, if there's a circumstance, there's a conflict, first thing you want to do is shut up. Don't say anything. And don't start going to the phone and putting your opinion on it. Stay away from everything and get to the throne. And hear what God has got to say or else you could cause more damage. Amen. Hello? Again, it's God's desire that you know his voice. And as, as a believer, we need to know his voice. But he'll speak to you in many ways. Just like he's speaking to us tonight. Colossians 2.16. Is everybody there? Yeah. Are you blessed? <laughs> All right, 16. I don't even go to those things, man. I stay off of it. In fact, I don't even know how to use this stupid stuff. Sometimes I do. I have, usually have to ask Viv or my wife, what the heck is this thing? And then when you see something, people's opinions is like, what a moron. It's like dumb. Now, I do research. I love to do research. I like to find out what's happening, especially when I, I like to see demonic arenas and get arrested. I like to see child smuggling organizations get busted. You know, I want to see the powers of darkness get slammed. Because we're supposed to be taking territory. One of the places we need to start taking territory is on the internet. Amen. Not allowing the internet to take your territory. I see many people fall. The first thing they want to do, can I get a phone? Why, you don't want to call, go to the throne no more? Well, I want to call everyone. Then the next thing, they're calling people they're not supposed to be calling. They want to tell them how good they're doing. <laughs> that doesn't last long. Verse 16. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding the festival of a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen and vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. I want you to know something. If you have a desire, you will dream it and you will vision it. Even if you have a desire or on a, um, a conflict with someone, that's why it's important to sever these things. If you've ever been offended by something, someone, you may dream it, envision it. And the enemy knows it because he knows that because that's an open door that he can give you a false dream and a false vision about a person. And you'll believe that you're getting something from God. And call yourself a watchman. No. God doesn't work that way. Does everybody understand that? That's why we must constantly sever ourselves from any kind of conflicts, offenses, everything, especially emotional attachments. Oof, constant. You know, when somebody's trying to get off of drugs and alcohol, you know what happens, right? They dream it. They dream it until it's been cut loose. Then they don't dream it anymore. But every once in a while, the devil will try to slide it in there. Somebody broke up with someone. Somebody, you missed someone. Whatever it is, the enemy's going to try to reattach it. If he can't get you while you're awake, he'll try and get you while you sleep. In fact, he'll even call you while you're sleeping. Your phone will ring. It will wake you up and, oh, it must be from God. I better call this person. I missed the phone call. Oh, it's a, man, I've been... Not always. 
could be a trap from hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make him leave a message. <laughs> and you know what? Check the fruits of the message. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Verse 18 again. <laughs> Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and imaginations, not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the what? Basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of who? Men. Men, secularism. These things indeed have a what? An appearance of a wisdom in what? Self-imposed religion with what? False humility and neglect of the body but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Oh, yes. These individuals are out of position they're out of position individuals. And most of them are unknowingly out of position. They don't even realize it. And they're being and they're going to be used to cheat themselves and others. Because the enemy loves to take advantage of us, doesn't he? Again, these are false desires of dreams, visions, and feelings, looking through the carnal eyes with secularism, and of course. Searching out technology from secular world. The technology of the idolatry or the idol or the phone. It's called phoning. That's why it's phony. Fleshbook, Twitter, you, YouTube it. And they're seeking these things and not the throne. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10. And he will answer you and show you mighty, mighty things that you know not of. It didn't say he would call you. Amen? He already knows your number. Don't worry about it. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. You call him, he calls you. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's his ways. Is everybody there? Verse 12. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Falls. Yeah, I got that in control. Hello. It's when you think you got it in control. See, the enemy knows where your strengths are. And because you neglect to maintain those areas, because you, we believe that we're strong in them, is where he goes. Does everybody understand that? He waits because we're not looking at those places where we believe we're strong. That's why you must look at every place and exchange your strengths for the anointing. You exchange your weaknesses for his strengths and you exchange your strengths for the anointing every day. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. No temptation is overtaken you except from such as is common to all men. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. When people are going, oh my God, I just, I don't know if I can take it anymore. Well, that, God ain't, that ain't God. God doesn't give you any more than you can handle. 
But there are individuals that just love to take up everybody else's burdens. And they feel good about it. But then they're miserable. Does everybody understand? Then they're miserable. You know, you're to take someone's burden and turn it over to the Lord. It's not your responsibility. It's God's responsibility when you release it into his hands. He says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. People love to just pick up responsibilities. We all think we can save the world. And we have a hard time saving our own self. Amen? He's the only one that can save anyone. He's the only one that can turn a heart. That's all we can do is plant a seed and intercede. Verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee from the internet sometimes, man. Flee from these things as false counsels. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we through many are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. Observe of Israel after the flesh are not those who eat the sacrifice partakers of the altar. What am I saying then? That any idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything? Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to who? Demons. I can tell you that you must, you and I must, first of all, look at what rules the internet. What rules all of this technology behind it? What is its resource? What is the source of it? It's all demonic. Who rules the earth? Satan's kingdom. How does he rule it? Deception. Does everybody get it? Amen. But if you're not in a place where you are connected and can't discern, you're going to feed off of whatever it says, whatever news comes out. Because you're not, you won't be sensitive enough to have the quickening of your spirit to say yes or no also. Amen. Rather that these... Uh, Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with what? Demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things that are lawful for me are not, but all things are lawful for me, but not all things are what? Help. Fall. Does everybody get it? It may seem a form of help, but sometimes it's just not. Seek the kingdom of God. Go connect first before you start your searches. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Flee idolatry, idols. Let me tell you, the technology today is an idol. Think about it. People are dependent on what to do by technology and not God. I mean, it's really happening. We're in there right now. If I, look at, believe me, I'm, our whole office is run by the internet and by, you know, man, when it goes down, we're all looking at each other going, ah! <laughs> I mean, all the, all the saw, everything's in there, all the records, you know. Nobody keeps hard records anymore. Of course, things are backed up on a hard drive, but, you know, you, everything is stored in a RAM. So in this, we are so dependent. And this is exactly the play. Even God warned us in the book of Daniel that knowledge would increase. Be careful. That's technology. First Peter chapter two. I mean, really, people don't even sit down with people anymore to eat. They sit down with their phone. Hey, how you doing? They put it right there. 
Selfie the selfie. My daughter walks around the house like this. Oh, yeah, we bed. <laughs> she even breathes them in the shower, I think. I don't know, man. It's like weird. Put them in a bathtub over there. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. It's crazy. You know, keep them out of the bathrooms. And then they fall in the toilet or the, the phone falls in the tub or whatever. I know I've cleaned my pool with it in my pocket, you know. I was, uh, forgot it was in there. I didn't drown anyone, though. Second Peter chapter 2. Did I say Second Peter? All right, well, we had a little technical problem. Second Peter chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, which a lot of this in there, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty or freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse than the what? Than the beginning. For some of them have been better that they'd never not known the whole way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment and deliver them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and so having washed to the wallowing in the mire. Many live in error, influenced by the spirit of error, which is error, belief systems, traditions of men, things that have handed down, I idols, re religions, even the media, you know, especially social media. They've, it, one of the things that happens is it, it brings a place, these idols will bring us to a place of compromise. In other words, in laziness, because a person would then get to a place where instead of seeking the Lord, they'd rather seek the internet. And what happens when a person does that, they begin to lose discernment. They begin to lose discernment. And then the desires that God has placed in them are being replaced by other desires. 2 Peter chapter 3, 14. And, and, and again, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've, I've been helped tremendously through the internet about changing parts on a vehicle or how to do something or whatever. Um, and I've sought the Lord on certain things. Lord, where do I go? Of course, you can put up a video and whatever. But then there were times when I just had to wait. I remember repairing an axle in the, in a, in the car. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Guy, this, one, this side is fine. You don't have to take this side off. Go to the other side. That one's the bad one. Saved me a lot of time because, you know, most of the time backyard mechanics are always doing stuff like, uh, let's just replace everything at it, one thing at a time and see what works. But when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, you can usually bypass that and get right to it. Amen? In 2 Peter chapter, uh, second, uh, yeah, verse 14, I think. Yeah. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, written to you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which 
are some things hard to understand which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the Scripture. Why? Lack of communication and felt relationship with the Holy Spirit. You therefore, beloved, since you know these things before and beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace which is God's plan and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to him be the glory both now and forever. In other words, it's a warning from falling away from our consistency and steadfastness and making, maintaining that connection with the Lord. In 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, then one more scripture. Phones or thrones? Our choice. They call them smartphones. I don't tell you, I, for my phone, I think it's the most stupid phone that I've ever had in my life. Do you, you know, do you ever do a direction? Hey, bring me here. <laughs> Brings you to some other state almost sometimes. You're going in a wrong, well, man, I'm, I'm hey, you ask for it, you're, you're trusting in the phone, and you're realizing, no, this isn't familiar. Where am I? Oh, it's the wrong, it's the same it's got the right address on here, but it's, and it's the right address in somewhere else, but it's all wrong city or wrong, whatever it is, and you're, anybody ever happen to you? I'm the only one? <laughs> Y'all need to repent. <laughs> First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every phone. Do not believe every internet. Do not believe every website. Do not believe every doctor. <laughs> Don't believe every believer. <laughs> do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God or not. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world and they are expressing themselves through technology. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. I've never heard my phone say anything that it, can, it believes Jesus came in the flesh. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, hello, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world and in your phone. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I'm going to close at Psalm 1. You know how many believers still believe in reincarnation? I'm telling you, I get approached on it all the time. And they say that they're believers and they believe in reincarnation. Which is a lie from hell. Psalm 1. They say they're believers anyways. Remember, believe means to follow. Let's speak this together. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hello. Who does not seek the internet for counsel. Amen. He goes to the throne and not the phone. Nor stands in the path of sinners. 
nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Man, there's a lot of scornful on that flesh book. But he delights in the law of the truth of God, the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Listen, when you're a tree planted by the rivers of water, you're in joy. Amen? That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will what? Prosper. But the ungodly, the counsel of the world, is called the ungodly. That's not so. But they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the rewards of judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the ways of the righteous, but the way of the God ungodly shall perish. So I encourage you, use wisdom and discernment and stay connected. Be consistent in your connection with the presence of God and his word. And hear his voice. Wait upon him. Let him speak to you. Let him unction you. Don't be anxious for nothing. That's called fear. But it says, in, but prayer and supplication. And if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Wait. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We desire to come to you, Papa. So, Lord, before we do anything, I'm asking that you'll quicken us to every area, every decision that we come to you so that we may be guided by you so that we can seek the kingdom and your righteousness and your counsel, correction, and direction then you release what you want us to do. So, Father, I apply the blood of Jesus on every single one in this room. I'm asking, Lord, that you'll visit us in a mighty, mighty way and bring revelation and impartation to each and every one and continue, continue heal each one's body, increase the immune system in each and every one, and, Lord, strengthen us through the anointing of Christ that we may overcome every voice of the stranger and bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>